A while ago, well actually it's more like three years ago, I showed you how to build your own DIY desk PC, complete with a custom glass topper and a fully kind of custom built wooden chassis, although I didn't do everything quite right. In fact, if you have a look at the back of the, the, the case, as it were, um, as it currently is, it's not great. The graphics card is mounted by sort of wiggling the motherboard into place while putting the graphics card in, kind of hoping that it falls into the slot, and the motherboard is mounted uh, basically just lying on a piece of cardboard and then a wooden block, so it's not exactly fantastic. Now in this video I want to show you how you can do it a bit more properly, a bit more sensibly if you like, and if you want to know more about how to build the chassis or uh, where I got the custom piece of glass from, that kind of stuff, I'll leave the original video up there that you can check out, but suffice to say the main difference between my original solution and what I'm recommending you do is get a donor case. Now the case I have is a Colink Balance, which is one you can pick up from Overclockers UK, who supplied it for this video, and I'll leave a link to it in the description down below, but suffice to say it's actually just a really nice case overall. It's actually incredibly budget for the features you get, like a proper tempered glass side panel, you get addressable RGB in the front and an addressable RGB fan in the back, a power supply shroud, and it actually looks pretty decent to build in normally too. Now let's get to building the desk PC. Now, I'm assuming here that you've either already watched the original video or you already have an idea of what you want to do. Um, and so the first thing you need is a box or a chassis, if you like, to house all of your components. Now, I'm doing this in a corner desk where I can basically tuck the PC off away in the corner. And that means that, especially with the sloped side I added, it means that I don't you know, hit my knees on it every time I go and sit at the desk. The next thing you want to do is disassemble your donor case. Now, most of the these cases are held in by screws and rivets and so you can either unscrew them or drill them out and that's pretty simple that's what I did here and I removed the rear IO panel as well as the motherboard tray that are still connected all in one piece and that's pretty much it now if you plan this well in advance then you can basically just use that motherboard tray and rear IO panel as the sort of backplane of your case and therefore you don't need to modify that in any way but because my uh, setup is already created and specifically my power supply is too far away from my motherboard uh, to use the stock brackets and the motherboard tray is slightly too wide I'm gonna need to chop some bits off so let's do that. Now I'm also cutting out the top fan mount sort of grill so that I can better mount the two fans and the 240mm radiator that I have in my system. The two fans that are currently in the sort of back side of the case are currently only held in by zip ties so not the best solution and so this should be a welcome upgrade. So now that the parts in the donor case are ready we need to make our chassis actually accept these parts. So first of all I need to take the chassis out of my desk, uh, remove all of the hardware and then we can get to cutting some sections out to fit these new parts in.
So the way I ended up mounting the motherboard tray into the case was cutting a couple of standoff blocks for the sort of right side of the motherboard tray and then screwing in the motherboard tray from the inside outwards uh, on the back both sides so that it's nice and secure. I also did a similar thing for the fan grill where I screwed that in from the outside in and that is sturdy enough to be able to hold uh, four fans and a 240mm radiator so that's all good. Now I'm going to paint the edges that I've just cut and then we can go and put all of the parts back in and get it back working. So that is all the parts back in. Next task is to get the, the, the case back up under my desk. Um, normally I have two people to help me do this, but sadly today I, I don't, and so I'm gonna do this solo. Um, the way that I got it out in the first place was using my car's jack and a block of wood to lower it down slowly, and I'm gonna have to do the same, lifting it back up again. This was actually a pretty interesting and um, yeah, difficult procedure, but uh, I got it in the end. It is all back up, it is all fine. And the PC is now back and working, ready to game, edit, and do whatever else on. So that is how to more properly do a DIY desk PC. It's not the uh, perfect solution. There are definitely things you could do better, but working with what I have so far and my very limited skills, this is a, a better solution than I previously had it, as I can now actually add extra hardware into the system, like network cards or whatever else or you know, swap out graphics cards without having to remove the entire motherboard. And so I'm definitely happy with this upgrade. Now, if you want to check out the Coolink Balance case that I have used in this video, do take a look at the top link in the description down below. That's Overclock UK. They're the ones who provided the case. So thank you to them. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, mostly hardware reviews and that kind of stuff, then do hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon. And if you want to support the channel in more ways than just watching these videos and subscribing, then there are a load of links in the description down below that you can check out, like merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or actually the ones that are on screen because they're newer and better. Uh, and there's also a lot of stuff like Humble Bundle for cheap games support charities, Streamlabs OBS, and yeah, a load of other stuff too. Check it out. You can also check out some more videos over there, including the original DIY desk PC. And since my voice is going, I'm going to head off now. So um, yeah, if you've got any questions, leave those in the comments down below, but we'll see you all in the next video.